Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at shape strings and how to position them with a sketch. So here we have this letter A that's been created by a shape string. It's fully editable so we can change this and it's been positioned by use of a sketch. So we've constrained this A to this surface and if we change any of these and press Control R or edit refresh then the A will move position and this is a, just a pad on this face here so this is a pad for the A and we can change that shape string if we want by coming in and changing that to a C and hitting Control R and you can see how that's changed there. So this is how to do this and position it on your pad allowing you full control over where this pad will be. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we start a new document and we're in the part design. I'm going to create a simple body with a simple sketch in here on the XY plane. We're just going to pad this to allow us to attach the text to. So we'll place basically a rectangle or square in here just going to lock this geometry down as well using a symmetry constraint across those points and taking these two sides and we'll say this is a square so I'll make those equal and add some length to one of these sides of 100 millimeters And we'll just add a pad to this. So I've got the sketch selected and we'll just use a pad against that around five millimeters. All I want is a face because I want to show you how to align the text to the face and then align the text along here at different positions. The two ways you can actually do that. Now for this, I'm going to use a sketch on here as some kind of construction, but I'm not going to use construction geometry. I'm just going to use simple sketch geometry. So I'm going to click this face and add sketch. And this is the points of where we're going to align the text to. So I'm going to import some geometry using the create an edge link to external geometry. And I'm just going to import these points here. And now I'm going to put some lines in here. So just simple lines. Fortunately, I can't use this points geometry because it won't show up in the sketch once you actually come out of the sketch. So I'm just going to add this point and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. And we'll add some more lines, say here and here. So this is where the text, I want to line up to these. And we'll just put a constraint in there. Once these lines are in here, we can constrain these down. So I'm going to take these two points and say, add some length and height like so. So I want it 20 millimeters away from there and say from the top 30 millimeters down. I can do the same for all the others, but I'm just going to leave those for the time being. Also quite important is to add a bit of length in here so we don't have problems with this actually moving because I want to actually either attach this to one of these vertexes or one of the sides of text. So I'm just going to add some length in here as well, about five millimeters. So this serves as an anchor point for our text. I'm going to just take that and make all of these equal using the quality. Now that's done, I'm not going to constrain these, I'm just going to leave those floating for the time being, but just constrains one to show the concept. Hit close. We've got those lines on there. So you can see them there. Now, 
To add the text, we come over to the draft webbench and we're going to use the shape string tool. Let's locate here, create a shape string or draft in shape from text. First thing we need to do is set the working plane. So my sketch sits upon this face here. So I'm going to click this face, come up to utilities and select plane. Now you notice that the gridding is on underneath here and we can turn the gridding on and off with the little waffle icon down here. So you can see that gridding is there. Select this face. It doesn't matter how big this gridding is. We just got to move it onto that face. Come up to the utilities and select plane. That's moved the gridding on that face. So anything I do in the draft workbench now will be aligned to the face of this pad that I've selected. If I selected this side, utilities, select plane, you can see how those conform to those edges there. I want this one so my sketch sits upon the same plane as that gridding. I'm just going to hide the pad to make it easier to see what we're doing. And what we do now is select the create shape from text and just select somewhere on here. I'm just going to select here. Once I've clicked the X, Y, and Z coordinates, I have locked in. You can see the Z is five millimeters, and that's that five millimeter height from our plane. So this pad, we'll look at that. We can see the length of that is five millimeters. So this is up, this plane's upon that length, that face there, and it's five millimeters away from the starting position. Let's just hide that pad by pressing the space bar again. We're in the middle of adding text, so we've selected the point where we're gonna add it. We're gonna move it in a minute. So the top, there we go. Now I'm going to add some text here, so I'm just going to put the letter A in here. We can give it some height in a moment, but let's select the font file, so let's click that and come to, I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm going to come down to the root directory and come down to user, share, and come down to the fonts. On true type fonts. I'm just going to use Deja Vu Bold for this one. So that's locked in there. If I hit OK, that A has been placed there. First thing I want to do is rotate it around the right way. So let's select the shape string and use the rotate. And we just select somewhere in here. We can snap to a point. We've got our snapping on. So this here got the snap to snap end points, snap mid and center on there. I'm just going to take the other one off by clicking on it. The snapping is also available from down here. So now I can snap to that center of there. There we go. So if we come in, you can see the snappiness come into effect. So click and then decide where we want this to come out. So this is your rotation point. So I'm just going to come out here and just click. It just gives me a handle to rotate this. And we've got snapping as well. So if I press the shift, this will snap 90 degrees. I know my shift is connected to my touchpad here and the touchpad keys are shift. So I may want to change to a different method of control on here. I'm going to come around and just go 90 degrees or I just can type in 90 and you see on the left it say 90, hit enter. That's brought that around to 90 degrees. Now I can use the move, so select the shape string use the move with our snapping is still on now click on this so i lifted it and we can snap to the vertex of these quite easily so i've just clicked once lifted that and we just snap to those vertexes there and that allows me to easily snap to that point and align it to there so we bring back the pad that'll be in line with that sketch so actually that's behind that pad and you can see that sketch vertex the top one is in line with the middle of that eight so that's one way of aligning those using the external sketch as a way of snapping to this so i've given myself vertexes to snap to so you can see all those vertexes there 
So we can snap this shape string by using the move and use the snapping and click in to make sure we've clicked on the middle. So you can see that white point is the middle and we'll just snap it to this one. So move it in and snap like so. Another way of doing this, click the shape string. Let's hide that grid in. So we've got our shape string selected and I'm going to connect it to this here. Now look at the map mode. At the moment it's deactivated so this is on the data tab. If we click on the end of that, we can map this shape string to any of these points. So at the moment this is selecting. If it's not selecting, just click so this button shows selecting. And I'm going to select that top point there. And now that's moved onto that point. It's not in the middle, but we've got some control here of where we want to place it. At the moment, we've only got translate origin. But I can also hit select in and click, say, this line. And that's flipped around that way, so we need to do some rotation. And we're going to go internal to hyphen three and just come down and rotate this, say, around the X, around the right way. So 90 degrees. That's flat, and that's in the middle of those two. But I want it using the vertex there. And we'll come down and change around the X. You can see that we're having problems with these. It's not actually working there, so we just Cancel out there and try that one again. So click on the straight string, come in to the map mode and then select the point that we want to connect it to, that one there, and hit OK. Now that's connected to that point there. What we can do, bring back the pad, if I move this sketch so I'm going to move this point here to say over here. If I hit close, that will take that letter with it. Let's come back to the part design here. What I'm going to do is take that shape string and click it and hold. So I pick it up and place it inside the body. That's now inside our body. Click the shape string and we'll pad that. I say one mil. So we've got a pad now. So what happens if we double click the sketch and move that now? So let's move this down here and hit close. That pad moves with that line. So we're able to move this around this face just by moving this sketch. Which means if I say we added the map mode of that shape string, which is now in here. So we've padded it, the shape string has moved inside the pad. Look at the map mode. And we'll pick this one. Hit OK. That's got a tick by it now. That means it needs refreshing. It needs to recompute. Edit refresh or Control R. Let's place that there. So now we have control over this with constraints here. So these constraints here we have full control over. Come in, let's just click on the pad and press the space bar and come into the shape string and press the space bar. So we can just see the whereabouts that is. So for instance, I want to take this one and move it across say 50 and then take this one and move it down say 50. And if I hit control R, we can see that A moves down. Bring back the pad, not this pad, this one here. Press the space bar. Shape string is still visible at the moment, but you can see that the pad has moved as well. So any changes in these, 80. Hit Control R or Edit. Refresh. We'll move those along with that geometry there. So we've got a way of aligning 
our shape string to our sketch just by using simple geometry and mapping the A or mapping the shape string using map mode to that point. So that's it, that's a quick tip for me, how to use the shape string in your part design, but allowing you to constrain that shape string with a sketch. So you can accurately place that and align that on your project. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.